If you actually tried to picture Graves' number in your head, then your head would collapse to form a black hole. Now, that's actually, that's not just some sort of crazy sort of pictorial image. It would, it would. There'd be too much, you couldn't store that much information in your head. People think uh, mathematicians just basically look at bigger and bigger calculations and bigger and bigger numbers, which is not entirely true. But Graham's number, uh, I, I love because it's the biggest number that's been used constructively. Well, because there's a, there's a sort of maximum amount of what we call entropy that can be stored in your head. And the maximum amount of entropy you can store in your head is, is related to, this, to a black hole the size of your head. And the entropy of a black hole the size of your head carries less information than it would take to write out Graham's number. So the inevitability is if you started to try to write out Graham's number in your head, then your head would eventually have so much information that it would collapse to form a black hole. <laughs> <laughs>
to guarantee that there are at least four committees for which, <laughs> let's get this right, uh, there are four, uh, there are four committees. Each pair made out of those four committees has the same colour. And all people appear in, I forget. And for which each member of that committee is in an even number of committees. The, the, the ultimate question is, if I put these weird conditions on those uh, links of matching up different committees, what's the smallest number of people required for that to be true? So, uh, <laughs> that's the question that Graham was trying to answer in a very roundabout sort of way. So he said, OK, fine. But he wasn't applying it to committees, it was to something? No, it was to do with hypercubes in, extra di in higher dimensions, but it's the same question, essentially. And, and they worked out that there, there is an answer. It's not infinite, and uh, the answer is not bigger than Graham's number. And Graham's number was developed uh, in 1971 as being the maximum possible number of people you need for this to be true. And at the same time, they worked out the smallest number, uh, which was six. So somewhere between six and Graham's number is your answer. However, to actually see Graham's number, we have some more paper. Uh, we use arrow notation to get to Graham's number, except uh, we start, uh, and I use threes for a reason, because you start with uh, three, uh, arrow, 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 and you call that your first number, and the notation is to call that G1. And, and already, don't forget how mind-boggling this number was last time. This, this, is, this is already off the chart, right? Let's call this stupidly big, okay? Right? Now we say, well, it's G2. Well, G2 is a 3 where we've got a lot of arrows. How many arrows have we got? We've got G1 of them. Okay? So this was stupidly big. This is stupidly, stupidly big. Right? And then we carry on. We do G3. And we get a whole bunch of arrows. How many? Well, you guessed it. G2 of them. And, and then the thing is, you're getting numbers which uh, are beyond arrow notation, right? This is just, ah. And then you keep going, right? And uh, Graham's number is if you keep doing this, you keep doing G's, right? You go all the way down to uh, G64 equals Graham's number. <laughs> so it's just unimaginably big. I mean, literally. That's Graham's number. What do we know about Graham's number? Well, we don't know what its first digit is. We do know its last digit. Its last digit is seven. Uh, apparently we know about its last 500, but its last one is seven. People say, how big is it, right? And you can't even describe the, how many digits this number. You can't. Uh, you can't even, like, the, the number you would need to say how many digits there are. Yourself, you couldn't describe how many digits. And then it's, ah. Uh, and so the answer to this problem is somewhere between six and Graham's number. Recently, though, uh, mathematicians have narrowed it in even further. I think it was uh, early 2000s, someone pulled it in to be between 11 and Graham's number, right? So we're narrowing in, right? We're going to get there. Uh, and as far as mathematicians are concerned, 11 to the biggest number ever used constructively is quite precise, right? Because no matter how big a number you think of, right, and this is just stupid big, it's smaller than infinity, right? There's still an infinite number of numbers that are bigger than Graham's number, right? So frankly, we've pretty much nailed it, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the largest number to have been used in a, in a mathematical proof. There's these sort of tree theorems that use larger numbers now. Uh, but, you know, back in the 70s it was. Uh, just an interesting little anecdote about, about Graham himself. He was uh, actually a circus performer as well as a mathematician. So uh, he was certainly doing a few circus tricks when he, uh, <laughs> when he came up with this.